very nice. I've read lots and lots of books about 1956 as a Hungarian, about history, about personal recollections, about all the books about the what-ifs. We, of course, love to live through history and try to re relive it. And what if something happened a different way? Uh, I suppose that's not just a Hungarian thing, it's a human concept. We try to relive history in a different way and we also like to guess the future. These are the two impossibles. Um, this is not about that. It's a filter through Australian eyes, an Australian author, somebody who has no Hungarian blood, <laughs> no Hungarian uh, bias, no Hungarian... <coughs> self-whipping. We're very good at whipping ourselves and saying we are the, 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 uh, the uh, most unfortunate of all. Of course, this means that we don't know all the unfortunes of all the other nations of the world, but uh, again, this is our own burden. And so I thank Sandy Watson very much for writing this book, because it's an extremely good filter, and a filter through which we can say, well, this is our story. This is the story of Veronica Chus who uh, until recently was living in Australia amongst us, whose family is here, and I welcome them very much, and thank you for being here with us today. And in many ways, it's an excellent commemoration of her life, and to show how every single person's life is something to be remembered. And if you look into the drop of the ocean, like her life, is the story of the Hungarians in Australia, or the freedom-loving people, who made it all the way to this very fortunate country, the lucky country. Where breathing air, where there's enough oxygen, is a matter of norm, is normal. And this is given and taken for granted here. And for those of you who are born here and live here, I can tell you that it was not the norm in Europe, in Central Europe and Eastern Europe, where I come from in the 1950s, 60s, 70s or 80s. And there are many countries in the world even today where it's not the norm yet. So this is not just a book about Hungary, it's not at all a book about Hungary, it's a book about why 1956, 23rd of October happened in the bookshelves of many Hungarians when it's translated into Hungarian. So thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, and um, thank you, Dr. Heider. Uh, my last task this evening as publisher is to introduce our author, who is going to tell you a bit about the backstory of writing Veronica's story. I'd also like to <coughs> mention her two lovely daughters, Veronica's lovely daughters, and I'm so glad that her family is here to celebrate this evening. Um, and Sally has done a remarkable job. When she first brought the story to me, as I explained earlier, I really couldn't put it down, and I don't think you will be able to either. So, without further ado, here is Sandy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for your absolutely <coughs> lovely words. And Anna has absolutely touched on what this book is about. And one of the things that really attracted me to Veronica's story and that was the refugee experience that it's very much about. It, it really is that determination, that drive for freedom, that absolute quest for a better, safer life that, that really was what generated the uprising. And for me, that refugee experience has been, has fueled my ongoing PhD research where I'm looking at refugees and how they're portrayed in the media. And it's influenced a lovely exhibition that I got to do with a lovely, very talented photographer, Susan. And I travelled to Hungary, and I loved it. It's countryside, it's people, it's hospitality, everything about it. Hungary was still a communist country then, so there was still something of this kind of wall of silence around it. And I was really struck by how little people outside of the country knew about what had happened. And then it became a personal story. Can you two girls just come up here for a moment, please? No. And then it became a really personal inspiration for me. And that happened when I met my dear friend Ronnie Chers, and I was sharing an apartment together in 1995. <laughs> so there's some history there. And that's when I heard Veronica's story, Ronnie and Terry's mum's story for the first time. 
And I remember saying to Veronica, where were you when the uprising started? And her eyes filled with tears and she said to me, I was there at the radio station when it started. The security police started shooting, they opened fire and the boy beside me was shot and killed. And she said, and I knew then that I had to leave my beloved hungry forever. And her words struck such a chord with me because of that refugee experience. I really want to acknowledge Veronica's incredible <coughs> generosity in doing this. It is a big ask to have somebody write your memoir as well. And she was an incredibly brave and honest woman. The actual writing of the book, even though the inspiration for it came many years ago, the actual writing of the book started in 2003, so it's been 10 years in the making. <coughs> My son Felix was two weeks old, and Felix and I started going out every week to meet with Veronica. And Veronica, everybody that knew Veronica knows, she loved kids. So she'd open the door, whisk Felix out of my arms, and then feed him and bounce him on her lap while I interviewed her. So it was a lovely, lovely two years of those interviews that's really the inspiration for this story. So I can't thank Veronica enough for her absolute honesty and her bravery and her generosity. And many, many, many aspects of the book are very, very confrontational, very, very um, heartfelt memories and very difficult memories for Veronica. So thank you, Veronica. It is heartbreaking for me that, in one sense, Veronica can't be here. She passed away two years ago, and I know it's heartbreaking for all of us here who knew Veronica. But let me say, Veronica would have been tickled pink to see all of these lovely faces here for the launch of her story. She just would have loved it. So thank you all for being part of it. People here tonight really have been on this 10-year journey with all of us because it's been such uh, a big process. And I want to also thank two other very important people, Ronnie and Terry, who've been so committed to getting <coughs> Veronica's story published over this 10 year, 10 year period. So thank you again. Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank my partner, Dave, graphic designer, for this lovely cover, <laughs> sterling cover. Thank you so much. But also. but also for quite a lot of support over the process of the book, as you can imagine. And I really want to thank my publisher, Blender Banks of Lacuna, because Lacuna is creating a platform for stories like Veronica's to be heard, and that's so lovely. I know that, that Veronica's uh, late husband, Paul, would also have been really excited to see this, and that for those of you who read the book, you'll find out about Veronica taking the decision, risking her life to cross the border, as many other 56ers did, and finding love along the way. But you can read the book to find out about that. <laughs> <laughs> and no means least, but lastly, a massive, massive thank you to the Hungarian community here in Australia and in Hungary, who've just given me so much bottomless support throughout this. And I'd particularly like to mention the Honorary Consul, Istvan, where are you? Where's Istvan Belagos? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. He's been absolutely incredible. Andrew and Eve Kavezdi. I can't see Eve, Andrew, but I know she's there. Hello. <laughs> Who's been absolutely incredible. And also, for those of you who know Antal Amon, Tony Amon, who's now back in Budapest, but... Tony generously gave of his time to read the manuscript and help with street names, etc. So my heartfelt thanks to everybody, to the whole Chers family, and to everybody that came to share our launch. Thank you so much. Thank you.